It's Salim Rezaia here. This is part two of IV and IO access. And what I wanted to focus on for this part was flow rates through different types of access. Now, I'm not talking about pressure bags. I'm talking about flow to gravity. And so this is from a couple of papers. I have the PubMed ID numbers at the bottom here, looking at different size access and how quickly saline would flow through that. And what you can see is that a good 14 or 16 gauge IV is going to give you your best flow rates. This is going to be super important in trauma patients where we're having to put pack red blood cells or blood products back in, but also in cardiac arrest where we're having to give quite a few medications. Now, I know a lot of people like to focus on getting central access, but I think we oftentimes forget about IO access and how quickly we can get that, how successfully we can get that and also how quickly the flow rates are in those patients. So for example, look at a 15 gauge humeral IO, which is my go-to in cardiac arrest and in trauma patients that um, are intubated or basically not awake. Because look, you can get 80 cc's per minute in with a 15 gauge humeral IO, which is just below what an 18 gauge peripheral IV does, except that a 15 gauge IO is gonna be much, much faster than getting IV access in these patients that are either hypovolemic, bleeding out, or just have no cardiac output. A lot of patients come in to the ER oftentimes with a 15 gauge tibial IO. This is fine. It's just about as good as a humeral IO. It's not that much different. And then you can see that as you get to smaller and smaller IVs that that flow rate just starts to go down. So the key here is, is that you want large gauge peripheral, but if that's going to take too much time, don't forget about the IO. I feel like it's an underutilized entity and you can see how quickly those flow rates are in patients who get IOs. They are just as good. The way I think of IOs is anything you can run through a peripheral IV, you can run through an IO. It's just a non-compressible vein. That's the way I think of IOs. I feel like it's underutilized and something to think about, but hopefully this chart helps you as you're making these decisions in the patients that you're caring for.